Baba gives us the title of the Master Ocean. Baba is the ocean. Even in Bhakti, Baba is described as the ocean. And Baba says that you children are the master oceans. I make you the master ocean. And what is the quality of the master ocean? So Baba says merge all rubbish and give jewels. So have you seen that in the ocean there is so much of dirt and filth that's flowing into the ocean. But the ocean merges everything and there are jewels in the bed of the ocean and the ocean gives jewels also. So it receives dirt and rubbish, stays clean despite it and then also gives jewels. So Baba says you have to become like that master ocean. And you see there is a picture in the eight powers which is the picture of the power to accommodate. And in that picture there is an ocean and in that ocean so many rivers are flowing into it bringing all the dirt and mud with them and yet the ocean merges everything whether the river is clean or dirty when they merge into the ocean they become like the ocean and the ocean also gives jewels so this is an image that Baba has always described to us and Baba says now you have to become like the ocean you have to become the master ocean now just ask yourself what is the so you know there is an expression in the world when we say somebody is shallow <laughs> so have you heard that you know, sometimes you describe somebody as shallow and then how do you describe the ocean? The ocean is deep, deep, deep. So what makes the ocean? The ocean is the depth. And if something is shallow, it cannot have the quality of merging rubbish and emerging jewels. Now Baba is deep. And in the Murlis, we, we get a word unlimited and uh, Baba is not, you know, limited or small or shallow. Baba is unlimited. And then we also in Baba's company, we are supposed to be unlimited. And it is this unlimitedness or it is the depth that Baba gives us, that makes us the master ocean. Now, every, each one has to check for themselves. How much depth have I taken from Baba? So, do you live on the surface of the skin? Or do you see deeper? So, do you just see people, their behaviors? Do you see circumstances? Do you see, okay, this is favorable, this is unfavorable? Or do you see deeper? So, that's the question that we have to answer because without depth, we cannot merge the rubbish and emerge the jewels. Now, when we check what is our depth, so you see in the world uh, people take everything on face value. So you know it's uh, what meets the eye. So whatever is visible to the two eyes is called the truth. 
So, you see that even science tries to attempt deeper, but then um, science is also capable of limited depth. And uh, you see that, just take for example, if somebody is upset, so how do you think about that scene? Do you think about the scene as, what did I do to make them upset? And if I have not done anything to make them upset, then why are they showing me that they are upset? <laughs> so, is it this way that you approach things? Or if there is a situation, do you approach it like, what did I do to make, create this situation? Or do you approach it uh, with depth or do you look at the here and now and do you think that I didn't do anything to bring about this situation so why am I being forced to deal with it? So, you see that we have to check for ourselves whether I look deeper because Baba has given us the buddhi to look deeper but do I? when? You know, when you talk about the subject of psychology, psychology also tries to see more than what meets the eye. So, you know, when you analyze the psychology of something, then they will tell you that, you know, this child is behaving like this because something happened in the childhood and some, some situations that they went across 10 years ago or 20 years ago and that has left a mark or you know uh, there was I remember there was this one thing and a lady shared with me she said that I used to have a lot of issues with my emotional stability and I could feel fear and anger and anxiety and insecurity in the most safe of circumstances. And then she used to tell me that I never understood why I feel like this because the immediate environment was always okay. So, uh, the immediate environment there was nothing to complain about. The husband was doing fine, the children were fine, all well settled according to what you call well settled in the world. But still there was this sense of, you know, fear and anxiety and uh, distress and insecurity that would emerge very often in me. And then she said, I went for therapy. And uh, in that therapy, they told me that they asked me about the whole history. And then they figured out that I was there at the time of partition. So, when she came, uh, I think it was 15 years back and uh, she was almost 90 at that time. And she said that, um, so they figured out that I went through that whole phase of partition. And then they told me that because you went through that whole phase, so there is a lot of residue and imprint that you are carrying. And you have to now, you know, reinforce a lot that that is over and done with and now I am in a safe environment and I am with my friends and family and then you have to build that security inside. So, uh, then I told her that, uh, you know, uh, even, uh, but you know, she, she couldn't do that despite whatever they were telling her. And then what she started doing is, she started taking some pills and medication because she understood that there was something in her that was triggering the anxiety and fear. Now, Baba tells us that, you know, when you don't understand, when you understand the half truth, now you see the half truth, it is said the half truth is more dangerous than the whole lie. <laughs> So, when you understand the half truth, when you dig deeper but not deep enough to reach the bed of the ocean, 
and you just dig deeper you know on some level then that doesn't give you the required result and Baba tells us that I take your buddhi into the unlimited and what is the unlimited to the very beginning Baba doesn't tell us that you know uh, and have you seen that it's very interesting that although we take 84 births and uh, we we spend 63 births in sorrow and distress right we spend only 21 births in happiness of course it's equal 2500 2500 but when we churn the Swadarshan Chakra, Baba will tell us that when you remember yourself in the soul world, remember your stillness, your peace, your purity. When you remember yourself in the deity world, remember your sense of harmony and remember your heart full of love and your heart full of, you know, uh, harmonious feelings for nature and souls. But when you come to the copper age, don't remember that you were wandering and miserable and did bhakti. <laughs> remember that you were like a worship worthy deity in the, you know, in the temple, fulfilling the desires of those who came to you, wandering and asking and calling out. So, Baba, even Baba never asks us to remember the painful phase with pain right because whatever you remember will color you and Baba always asks us to remember our best elevated states in all of the cycle so even when we technically know that we were bhagats wandering and sulking and crying and being miserable uh, Baba says, don't remember yourself as the Bhagat. <laughs> remember yourself as the deity in the temple who the Bhagat is praying to. Don't remember yourself as the one who is praying. So, why? Because you see, it's very important to know yourself through Baba. And when we know ourselves through Baba, we understand what am I? So Baba today says that you are a soul and you are like a rocket. And you see, uh, it's so easy for a rocket to just switch from one place to the other within a fraction of a second. And Baba says, you're like that. You're the fastest rocket. You're not even a rocket. So <laughs> rockets are also slow. You're the fastest rocket. And it is absolutely possible for you to switch your awareness from here to the soul world, to the deity world, to your worship worthy stage, to your perfect Brahmin stage, angelic stage in a second. And Baba gives us this knowledge and knowledge, when you imbibe knowledge, you, your you know, with knowledge makes you deep. So knowledge gives depth into you and knowledge is what makes your intellect broad and unlimited. And when you see yourself like that, then you don't see yourself as a victim uh, who saw the partition or a victim whose parents were abusive. You are a victim, you know, who didn't uh, get their fair share in the world. You see yourself as the pure, powerful, peaceful, you know, wonderful soul that you really are. And that is what Baba does to us through knowledge. And then Baba gives us the knowledge of the whole drama. And Baba says that whatever is happening, so the drama is moving in cycles. Yes, and drama is cyclic. And in the drama, every second has a forward linkage and a backward linkage, right? And every second of the drama is connected to every second of the last 5000 years. 
Do you understand that? That, you know, whatever is happening right now is not because of factors that are limited to this time. But whatever is happening right now or whatever part anybody is playing has got to do everything with the entire journey of 5000 years. And when you start seeing that, when you start understanding that, then you don't, uh, you don't judge people and situations on the basis of, you know, cause and effect in the moment. So you don't say because I didn't do anything so they shouldn't react. They will react if that's the sanskar that has been created for the last 63 births and it is okay. And it's got nothing to do with you or it's got nothing to do with the moment. So these are the things that Baba teaches us. And when you start understanding, so you see that Baba tells us that there is a deeper spiritual reason why you are taking Gyan today. Yes, and it's not because you're spiritual minded, you're a good person, you're blah, blah, blah. No, it has got nothing to do with all of that. <laughs> there is a very deep spiritual reason or you're the best person on earth and, you know, there's nobody like you. <laughs> yes, maybe that's true in the unlimited sense, but not in the limited sense. It's not like, you know, nobody's better than you around you. So when you look around, there are many people who are right now better than you. They are more intelligent, more sensitive, they understand things more, they are capable of more compassion right now. They, there may be many qualities in many people around you, but why you become Baba's child has got nothing to do with who you are today. And it is connected to your whole journey. And because you are a deity soul, however morphed your image is today, <laughs> you know, however distorted you've become today doesn't matter. But if you are a deity soul originally, and you are the one who has done so much bhakti right from the uh, copper age, then you will start taking gyan today. And you will start understanding Gyan and again change into Deity. So that's the reason why you are uh, Baba's child and you are a Brahmin. Not because you are more talented, you are nicer and sweeter and you are more pure than others. No, <laughs> you could. And this is why, you know, it's very important to have this unlimited vision. And I will tell you, when you focus on limited things, so you know, maybe when somebody comes to you and you are looking at them not as a soul who has had a journey of 5000 years, but as, a, but as somebody in their present form, you are looking at them as a, you know, as the personality they are today, then you might misjudge and miscalculate what they are going to be tomorrow. And uh, sometimes, you know, uh, I remember there was this one uh, sister and I saw her when she came and she was, um, she was not, she was not somebody you would expect to become such a good BK. And when she came, we all had doubts <laughs> about how she would understand Gyan and stuff. Because she was very different from, uh, you know, our idea of BKs. And she would use clangs and she would dress very, in a very different manner. And uh, she would be, you know, she would eat and drink things that we never thought about. And uh, she had this, you know, this uh, very straight and rough uh, way of talking to everybody. And then she started taking Gyan and... She just transformed into a very nice, disciplined, well-behaved Brahmin. <laughs> and she stopped doing all of that. And that transition made me wonder, you know, so, and it really made me wonder that 
there is a different reason why we are doing what we are doing or we are capable of what we do and it is not related to who we are right now. So, in the worldly sense if you see somebody you will never be able to uh, really because you see in the worldly sense when you see somebody you see uh, you, you have a different idea of what is rubbish and what is clean and what is pure. But purity is not about who they are today. Purity is the original essence and until they make contact with Jnana and Yoga you do not really know how pure the soul is. <laughs> and um, you know sometimes when you see, uh, have you seen that when you wash utensils some utensils look very, you know, they look almost clean, but then when you start cleaning them, you know that they are really dirty and it can't be cleaned further. And then there are some who are very dirty on the external, but you clean them and they clean, they get cleaned instantly. <laughs> so that's how the, that's how it is. And Baba says that when you start seeing everything not at surface value, but when you hold the knowledge of the soul and you know the, hold the knowledge of the drama and you hold the knowledge of how this is the time of transition and you hold this knowledge that you know everybody that we are looking around is basically masked. So, you know we are all moving, we have a mask on us right now and uh, you do not know who is behind that mask. <laughs> so, until every soul makes contact with Jnana and Yoga, they make contact with Baba, they, they do not reveal themselves to you, they do not reveal themselves to themselves. So, you do not really know what lies behind the mask until every soul knows Baba and learns from Baba and follows Baba's directions and changes into who they really are. So, Baba says when you hold all this in your awareness then you do not mind the rubbish because you know that the rubbish is just an aspect of the present, but there could be a different thing below that rubbish. <laughs> so, you do not mind the rubbish and then you focus on what is inside. And uh, second thing is you do not dwells emerge from you because when you soak in the rubbish of the other then your dwells do not emerge. So, you are not able to have good wishes, good feelings or you know words of knowledge with conviction for that soul. So, Baba says you have to be the master ocean like me and knowledge will give you that depth. With that depth you can see events and things and everything differently and you know when it comes to events, when it comes to situations, I remember that when I came into Gyan, I used to see every situation as a problem. And you know whenever the situation was not in my favor, I would just have this thing that this is a problem. But when slowly gradually as you start understanding drama, that drama is actually your friend, yes? And drama is also helping you apply Gyan, apply your spiritual powers and overcome situations and emerge in your powerful and virtuous and knowledgeful stage. So, I started seeing every situation as an examination that you know that makes me aware of how, uh, what do you say, um, how capable I am. <laughs> so, I started seeing that you know if that situation had not come, I would not know how much I can tolerate. If this situation had not come, I would not know how much I can talk with love or how much loveful I am. And if the situation had not come, 
I would not know what is the quality of patience and how patience rewards. So, I started you know with this knowledge that Baba says that the drama is rigged in your favor and that the drama is Kalyan Kari. But how do you see the face of that Kalyan Kari drama? Only when you apply the knowledge and your virtues and powers in every scene of the drama and you wait until wait and create until the drama and the benevolence of the drama hidden in it reveals itself to you. So, when I started having this faith that the drama is actually Kalyankari, then I then more and more the Kalyan in the drama started revealing itself to me. And I remember you know there was this one neighbor we had and he once came and he came with a lot of anger and <laughs> he had come to fight and he had he had some misunderstanding about you know uh, something uh, about the center and then he came to fight and um, when he came to fight then uh, there was somebody in the center who told me Didi you don't go we will talk to him and why do you have to go and talk to a person who is so angry why do you have to face that leave it. So I said no let me go if that's the drama then let me go and you know sit there and know what's in their heart. And when I went there and I talked to him, I figured out that this is the person that I had been looking for because there was some seva to be done and he is the right person to get that seva done. <laughs> and when he came to the center, within minutes he cooled down and then we started talking and then I told him, you know, we, we are caught up in this one situation and I think you can help us and he said I will be more than glad to do it. And you see in the whole colony I did not know this person existed. I did not know that he was there. <laughs> I did not know that this job could be done through him. And just think about drama. That drama brought him to me and he is the one who sat in Baba's home and promised that he would get the work done and I didn't have to go looking for that cooperative soul and make effort for it. <laughs> so, slowly gradually with this faith that you know whatever is happening is happening for good, I have stopped you know what do you say resisting it. I have stopped resisting the drama, I have stopped creating negative thoughts about the drama that uh, you know this is a bad situation and bad thing and I have this deep deep faith that everything is happening for good. And when I started doing that then I started seeing that every scene in the drama is not a problem it is an opportunity to go ahead. And Baba says that when you have this kind of an this kind of a depth with the understanding of the truth about the drama, the truth about the actors in the drama, the truth about who is one, who are you with. So, you know Baba also gives us this awareness that you are never alone, you are always with Baba. And when you are with the Almighty, when you are with the ocean of knowledge, ocean of powers, ocean of virtues, there is nothing that you cannot deal with. Because with Baba on your side, everything is just a small thing. And when you start having this depth with this, you know, with the foundation of this deep seated awareness based on true knowledge that Baba gives you, then what happens is all the rubbish gets merged. You know all the negativity that emerges from inside whenever you are faced with a difficult situation, whenever you are faced with an unfavorable behavior, all that rubbish gets emerged and what mer gets merged and whatever emerges 
is jewels of knowledge. So, Baba says that I give you the depth, I give you the knowledge which makes you merge all the rubbish and emerge jewels of knowledge. And that is pretty much the theme of the Murli today. And Baba says that it is through Jnana and Yoga that uh, you know that heaven is created. And Jnana is so powerful that it can change this Kali Yuga to heaven. But when is it powerful? When children imbibe the points of Jnana. You know, we know the knowledge of the soul, we know the knowledge of Baba and Drama, but we have to ask ourselves how much do we imbibe that knowledge so much that it becomes part of our attitude and reflects in our behavior. And then the second thing is Yoga. So Baba says, be very careful about Maya interfering in your Yoga and not allowing you to remember Baba. So, you have to, whenever you start remembering Baba, you remember everything, not just Baba. <laughs> so, that's what Maya makes you do. And I remember there was this one sister, she told me, I watched TV for half an hour and I didn't remember anything in that half an hour. But when I sat in yoga, I remembered 35 things in one minute. And I remembered I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to do the other. And then there were so many things that were disturbing me that I just got up. So I said, you see, this is Maya. And once we understand Maya's interference, we will emerge our powers and virtues and deal with Maya instead of questioning Maya. So, you know, when uh, the law says whatever you resist will persist. So, you don't have to resist Maya. You don't have to resist the thoughts and the situations and keep asking why is this happening? Why is this happening? But you have to know that as soon as you sit to remember Baba, there will be lots of things happening in your body, in your mind and in around you that will stop, start disturbing you in your yoga. But despite all of that, you are a soul and you have your eternal relationship with Baba and it doesn't take a lot of effort to continue to be who you are and continue to remember Baba despite everything. So Baba says that it is through Jnana and Yoga that heaven is created. But we have to imbibe the Jnana and we have to do the Yoga that Baba tells us to do and Gyan makes us very spiritually aware and when we hold the spiritual truth in our awareness we get that depth and that unlimited intellect which sees more than what meets the eye and in that seeing you know your attitude towards everything becomes that of acceptance and your attitude towards yourself becomes that of you know a winner, a vijay soul, victorious soul who can deal with everything and cross everything. And then today Baba also underlines the importance of being honest with Baba internally and externally. So what does internal and external honesty mean? So internal and external honesty is about using the resources according to the guidelines always. And Baba gives us the guidelines, the Srimat, for using all our resources. So whether, whether it is body, mind, wealth, time, energy, thought. So whenever you know you are using everything that you have according to Baba's directions, on the external level and on the internal level. So maybe you are using your money according to what Baba says, but not your thoughts, not your time. And Baba says, but you have to be honest internally and externally. So maybe you are wearing the clothes that Baba asks you to wear, 
but not having the attitude that Baba asks you to have. <laughs> so Baba says that internally and externally, both we have to be truthful to Baba's directions and ask your heart whether, you know, I'm cheating on the inside. I'm a good BK on the outside, but maybe I'm cheating on the inside and my thoughts and feelings and my internal attitudes and my drishti and my you know my un, in my inner world is not in alignment with baba shrimat of purity and discipline so baba says it's very important that you check inside out what is the level of your honesty because it is this honesty which will make you transition from a brahmin to an angel to a deity okay om shanti 